Hi, Andrew Kramer here for creativecow.net. And in this tutorial, wait a second. Don't I get theme music? All right. In this tutorial, we are going to be creating some ray traced like reflections inside of After Effects. Now, we're going to be using just the built in tools of After Effects 7 and in this case, actually 6.5 as well. And as you may know, After Effects doesn't handle ray traced reflections natively, so no surface materials can, you know, reflect the world around it. However, using a simple little method that I came up with, we'll be able to create some ray traced like reflections just like this. This method can also be used to create surface reflections for video as well as text and other logos. Anyway, let's go ahead and get started with the tutorial. This is kind of the comp we're going to be creating. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to create a new composition and we're going to be using the standard NTSC DV. However, we're going to use square pixels and that way it just looks a little bit better for the screen recording and I'm gonna hit OK and the next thing I want to do is create our text so I'm gonna take the text tool here and just click in the comp area and we're gonna type reflection and if you will notice I toggled our transparency so that we can kinda see what's going on here now the next thing we need to do is pre-compose this reflection into a new composition and the reason we do that it'll just make it easier to work with so with the layer selected I'm gonna choose layer pre-compose and we're gonna move all attributes into the new comp and we're gonna name this text and hit OK now the next thing we're gonna do is create our floor for our 3D world so we're gonna create a new solid and in this case we're gonna create a large solid instead of just the comp size we're gonna make this about 2200 by 2200 and the reason we make it so large is so that our floor covers the entire surface of what our camera can actually see so next step I want to go ahead and turn these two layers into 3D layers now our text is gonna be on top of our background so let's just move that on top and let's change our background to uh, well actually it's our floor so let's name it floor and now let's go ahead and turn these layers into three dimensional layers so we're gonna hit F4 to toggle our switches and we're gonna turn on the layer switch for the 3D layer by clicking there and now our layers are 3D and we have this little 3D gizmo here well with our floor layer selected we're gonna take the rotation tool and just rotate our background and if we hold down shift it'll snap and you'll see it kind of disappears well it hasn't it's just in line with our camera view here anyway I'm gonna go back to our selection tool and I'm gonna create another layer and this layer is not gonna be a 3D layer and we want to make this the comp size and hit OK and we're gonna take this layer move it into the background and we're gonna call it hit return or enter on the keyboard we're gonna call it BG for background. Now with this background layer selected I'm gonna choose effects generate and ramp and our ramp is basically a gradient and we're gonna go ahead and just change the color here to dark blue and a light light blue like that and let's go ahead and move our bottom point of this ramp if we select the ramp and we can move these little gizmos around, move this up a little bit and this bottom one I'm gonna move it up also and that looks pretty good now the next step is to create a three-dimensional camera that we can use to kind of orbit around our text so I'm gonna choose layer new camera and we'll just use the presets here and hit OK now the next step is to take the orbit tool orbit camera tool and we're gonna select it and we're gonna hold down shift and click and that way we can kind of move around this scene now what we want to do is just bring it down just so that we can see the top of it over top of our floor the next thing I need to do is create a light so I'm gonna choose layer new light and we're gonna make a point light and I'm gonna choose OK and the intensity we can set that to 200 and that should be OK for this case and we'll hit OK and now it's a little low so we're gonna zoom in here we wanna take this green gizmo area and we're gonna move it up on the y-axis 
about right there. Then we're going to go and we want to push it back kind of behind our reflection layer. So we can just click here on the Z and push left or backwards. Or we can switch to the top view and just move it back some. But I prefer um, when you can to do it in the view you're actually looking at and that way you can see what exactly it's going to look like. So I say about right there. It looks pretty good. And the other thing we need to do is create a new light that's an ambient light. And so I'm going to choose new light, ambient, and we'll make this only about 30%. And the reason we create an ambient light is just to kind of create a little bit of global illumination in our scene because if we increase the intensity of our, of our point light, it'll just make everything kind of blown out. But if we increase just a little bit of the ambient light, it'll just kind of fill in the areas, you know, like you would use a fill light, you know, in real life. So let's go and just call this fill and we'll call this point. Okay, now the next step is to create kind of a more reflective surface on our bottom layer or our floor layer. So I'm going to go ahead and bring the options down for our floor layer, our material options here. And we have all these different things like cast shadows, light transmission, but we're actually only going to be focused on the diffuse, specular, shininess, and metal. And basically these are the settings that say, okay, is this like really shiny? Like how does it work with the light? So in 3D programs you have like a little thumbnail of like a sphere and it kind of shows you what it's going to look like. But in here, a little bit different. So we want to just go ahead and play with these settings. So the first thing I'm going to do is bring the metal up just a little bit. <laughs> it's funny I say up. We actually want to bring it down to about 80 and that will actually make it a little bit hotter in this uh, diffuse area. And then we want to take the diffuse and bring it up. And that way we kind of get a hot spot in the background here. Let's go ahead and increase the intensity of our light. So I'm going to go to our point light, hit the letter T, and just increase this a little bit. That looks good. Now let's go ahead and move on to our next step. And what we're going to do is create that grid that you see on the surface. And so to do that, we're just going to duplicate the floor layer. So I'll choose Edit duplicate and with it selected we're going to choose effect generate grid and it'll just create a grid on top of it now we're going to change the size instead of these little controllers here we're just going to go to width slider and we're going to make them a little bit bigger than they show up there and we're going to make the border two and we're going to change the transfer mode of this layer if we hit F4, we can switch to those to overlay. And that way it's not as intense and doesn't look like too weird. And then also let's bring the opacity of that layer down. So I'm going to hit T on the floor layer and bring the opacity down to 50. Okay, looks pretty good. All right, now you're probably asking yourself, okay, what about this reflection you've been telling me about? Okay, if I take this text layer and we move to our front camera view, and we look closely, we see it's not exactly right on the floor. And we need to make sure that that is the case. So we're just going to take this and move it down. And you can just use the arrow keys and just click down. Let's see. Probably about there. It looks pretty good. And let's go ahead and move back to our active camera. Now, I want to point something out before we move on to the reflections. And that is... If I take this text layer and I move it down, you see that it actually intersects the geometry of the floor and basically gets cut off. So that's important to note um, once we get into the next step. So I just wanted to point that out. That's just the function of After Effects using the advanced 3D uh, you know, renderer. So now I want to go ahead and go into our text comp. So I'm going to Alt and double click on this text comp and it opens it up here. And so instead of looking at the transparency as the background, we can switch this off and just go composition, background color, and we can just make a gray color, and that way we can just see uh, what's happening here a little bit better. Now, the next thing we need to do is create the reflection. I didn't want to have to tell you this in the beginning, but we're not going to have real reflections. We are actually going to be generating the reflections, and they're going to be looking like a real reflection. So that's kind of the catch. But here's what we're going to do is we're going to duplicate this layer. So we're going to choose Edit, Duplicate. 
and we'll move it down below and we're gonna hit scale and if you hit S on the keyboard that brings up our scale we're gonna unlink the scale properties here by just clicking on this little chain and then we want to make negative 100 so just add a little minus and it should flip upside down just like that now that looks pretty good we need to take this bottom reflection layer and give it kind of a fall off so basically it's a gradient from you know fully opaque here to a little bit soft on the outside so we're just gonna select the layer choose effect transition and we're gonna use the linear wipe and if we set this to zero we can increase the transition completion until it's about halfway that's about 47 percent and we feather the edges some then we'll take this layer and hit the letter T and we'll bring the opacity down to say 50 percent now let's go back into our comp one and let's let's see about this reflection okay where did it go well I'll tell you where it went it went underneath because remember the layers are intersecting so it gets cut off well that's okay what we're gonna do kind of a bug in After Effects and it's not so much a bug as it is just the way things work so what we're gonna do is create a new adjustment layer and as some of you may know an adjustment layer is used to add effects to a layer and it applies itself to kinda of everything beneath it but in this case we're not gonna apply any effects to it in fact we just wanna use it to kinda of separate the way After Effects renders our 3D environment and what I mean is if I take this layer, I'm going to call it our divider. And I'm going to take this divider layer and I'm going to move it down in between our grid floor and our text layer. So right here. And what that's going to do, as you can see here, is separates our 3D geometry. Now, it's not changing the position of our objects, our floor, our grid, or our text. It's just changing the order in which they're rendered. So basically what that means is that our text is being rendered in its perspective view just like this and our our floor and our grid together are also being rendered separately and instead of them going and intersecting with each other they're just being rendered on top of each other like layers but watch what happens if I turn off our little adjustment layer here or our divider it goes back to intersecting so basically what happens is this adjustment layer for whatever reason intersects the way layers are rendered together um, in 3D space. So that's kind of a good thing in this case because we create this really cool reflective looking surface and you know works out better for us. Now let's go ahead and take this a step further with our reflection. So I'm gonna go into our text comp and I wanna go ahead and create a new solid. We're gonna create kind of a blurry fall off. So we're gonna go ahead and create a new solid and it doesn't matter what color we're just gonna create a gradient we're gonna choose generate ramp and that's our little gradient and we're gonna select the layer and hit T and bring the opacity down to 50 percent and that way we can kinda of see through it and what we need to do is take this ramp and match it up with the height and width of our reflection object so if this is like a picture or a video you want it to be just over the reflection area of the picture or video so your second duplicated instance of that item so in this case our text and instead of being right in the middle we want to bring just below the middle so that our top of our ramp or the black portion of our ramp is just below the top part of our reflection then we want to take our bottom ramp controller and move it up to just below the reflection and if you hold down shift it won't go off in different angles it'll just stay uh, parallel here and we move it up just a little bit more there okay perfect now I want to bring the opacity back up to 100 and then I want to take this layer and pre-compose it into a new comp and this way the blur settings can register this as the blur map so let's go ahead and pre-compose this so I'm going to choose layer pre-compose and we'll just move all attributes into the new comp and we'll call this gradient blur okay and we can go ahead and shut off the eye for this layer we don't want to see it we just want to utilize it to generate our blur so I'm going to zoom back in here and with our second reflection layer selected 
I'm going to choose Effect, Blur, Compound Blur. And then I want to use the Blur layer as the gradient blur. And what it's going to do is analyze that layer and use itself to kind of generate blur. So everything that is white is most blurry and everything that is black is not blurry. So as you can see, the black area here is going to be not blurry and it's going to slowly fall off. We want to change the amount of blur though to a lot less. Let's try five. Yeah, that looks pretty good. And so now it kind of looks like a, uh, you know, a cool reflective surface. Uh, and let's go back to our composition and see what it looks like. Okay, that looks pretty good. And so I guess the next step would just to be create that camera move. So we're going to go ahead and take the camera and we're going to hit P to bring up the position. And we'll go ahead and set a stopwatch keyframe there. And we'll take the orbit tool here and we'll just hold down shift and drag to the right so our camera moves to our left. And that looks pretty good. And then we can move ahead a few seconds, say four seconds, and hold down shift and just drag back across. And maybe we go down with it too so it looks like it's coming up higher. Okay, so now we got kind of this little camera move and that looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and select the position and hit F9. And that way we give it an easy ease transition into each keyframe. So if we look at the graph view, it's a smooth smooth pan, or in this case I guess it would be a dolly. Anyway, looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and preview this. Set my work area, hit zero. Okay. Pretty high tech. Now, let me just show you a couple of other tips to kind of streamline this process. So if I go back to our text layer, um, what we can do is set up a little bit of an expression so that we don't have to like change both the reflection and the actual item every time. You know, if we're working on a corporate video or a show spot or something, we have a bunch of different titles that we want them to all look the same. This will kind of help you to uh, work with that. So what we want to do is parent our reflection to our actual text layer. And that way, if we move our text layer around, it follows it. And that's handy if we want to, you know, shift it left to right if we're adding an image or something. And the other thing, too is I'm going to go down to our text options for our, our reflection and to our text and we want to go alt click on the stopwatch for source text and then I want to go to our top reflection layer bring the text options up and then I want to take this pick whip for the expression of the source text and I want to drag it to the source text of our original layer and what that's going to do very simply it's just whatever you change this text to, it's going to change it to it down below. So if we go, actually, no space, Creative Cow, hit Enter, it automatically updates it. And that's nice because, you know, you're doing 100 of these, you want to be able to do it relatively quickly. And then you slide it over left to right, make sure you hold down Shift. If you'd move it up, you're going to be moving the layer up past the uh, floor spot. So make sure that when you're moving the layer, move it left to right. And that looks good. And then we go back to our comp and it's all ready to go. So that's kind of a nice way to manage this effect and you know get some good use out of it. Now as an added bonus, if you have After Effects 7, you can download the project file. And I went ahead and just added a few different comps that are pre-set up using this method. Just a few different styles. This one's kind of like a you know, a dark movie trailer kind of effect. We have this kind of, uh, just, I'll call this the creative cow look. And you know, we have the pasture here. And we have a nice gold one, uh, kind of a rusty, and then we have like a brushed metal chrome kind of effect. So anyway, if you want, go ahead and download the project file and everything you need in here, you can open up. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. My name's Andrew Kramer, and by the way, if you want some more in-depth tutorials on After Effects, check out the Creative Cow Training DVD Serious Effects and Compositing. There's some great stuff in there, I can assure you. So for some information about that DVD and other great After Effects tools, check out www.videocopilot.net. Once again, I'm Andrew Kramer, and thanks for watching.